Hello everyone. So welcome to the channel of RD Automation Learning. So in this video, we are going to continue the playlist series of API testing. In this video, we are not going to see uh, anything about Postman, but yes, we are going to see the API testing interview question that is mostly asked in every interview is about the status codes. When do you receive 400 bad requests? When do you receive 401 unauthorized? So uh, as I have started uh, this API testing playlist, so there has been few comments coming up that what kind of interview questions can be asked? So in this video, we are going to cover that particular interview question on response codes. When can you face those kind of response codes? And we will try to cover it up with some real time examples so that if you answer in this manner in an interview, in a real time interview, so there are chances that you will get selected, right? So let us uh, see into this particular aspect right now, which are the response codes, which are the different, uh, you know, codes that you might encounter while doing API testing, right? So this is a question that you might get in an interview. So there are multiple requests, sorry, response codes. So one is 400 bad request. One is 401 unauthorized. One is 403 forbidden. Right, then one is 404 not found, 405 method not allowed. Right, so based on the endpoints, based on your request, these codes will be coming up. Right, now let us start with the first code. Okay, so first code is 400 bad request. Right, so when do you encounter this particular status code? Right. So let's say if you are working on some e-commerce API. Now, when I say e-commerce, so immediately you should be thinking about Flipkart, Amazon. Those are e-commerce websites where you will log in, you will search the product, add them to the card, and you will price them till the payment gets you. Now, in this particular e-commerce API, now think from an API point of view, from backend point of view, right? You attempt to create a new order without providing the required fields, right? You are trying to order something, but you are not filling all the details in the required fields, right? And uh, there is a, uh, you know, these three fields are required at, at the topmost, the request product, which product you want to purchase, customer and the quantity, how many count of that particular items you need, right? Maybe you are uh, ordering shirts, five shirts, 10 shirts. Maybe you are ordering, uh, um, you know, anything, socks, sweaters, anything, right? So you will be sending in the request it's a post request, so API orders, right? Product, any product for now, right? And content type would be application JSON. So you will be getting 400 bad requests if you fail to send the date, the data in any of these three fields, right? So all the three fields are mandatory. Now, if you see it from the UI perspective, whenever you do UI functional testing, right? And you don't, uh, enter the data in one of the mandatory field, you will get some message, right? So similarly, you should get this kind of error, missing required fields, customer quantity, right? As they have entered only product. So two fields were required, but they missed. So this is the example, how you can get the error. There might be some different error that could have been kept by your development team, right? Sometimes the errors are not uh, user-friendly also. Right. Those are very technical errors. So you will have to, uh, you know, suggest them that, OK, please keep this kind of messages. Right. So this was about 400 bad requests. Now, 401 unauthorized when interacting with an authentication API. If you provide incorrect or missing credentials, you may receive a 401 status code. Now, let's say if uh, you are trying to uh, log in with a valid username, but incorrect password is there or vice versa then you will get 401 status code, right? So it is 401 unauthorized. Response will be 401 unauthorized. Again, the it's a post method, right? Then 403 forbidden. Let's say you are accessing an API that requires specific user roles or permissions to perform certain actions. For example, uh, there is an investment banking uh, application, right? And uh, the vendors are also there. The consumers are also there and the system administrators are also there. When I say system administrators, it means they have full and sole access of the application of each and every page of each and every feature, right? When I say vendors, they have some restricted page. When I say customers, normal consumers, 
they have more restrictions, right? Not everything is visible to them. So whenever you are trying to access some particular page using an API for a user, which is not having that particular proper permission to access that particular page, right? Then you will get this kind of status code 403 for beta, right? Now, here is an example. If you attempt to access a restricted resource without the necessary permissions, for example, in below scenario, delete method can only done by admin, but you are trying to perform delete action with normal user also, right? So he is using this particular delete uh, and users one, two, three, right? Authorization, he has provided one bearer token and you are getting the response as 403 forbidden error insufficient permissions to delete the user, right? So this is the third. Now 404 not found. Now see, many people do get confused between 404 not found and 405 method not allowed. So there is a difference between the two codes, right? When accessing a resource that does not exist, you may receive a 404 status code. If you query an API for a user that does not exist, that means user ID 999 not present in the database, something that is not present in the database itself, right? So you won't get that response, right? For example, you go to a uh, shopkeeper and you ask them for, for some particular chocolates brand, which is not available to them. So that's not found, right? So he will return, he will respond to you. It's not found, 404 not found. Until unless he tells that he will order it from market in two or three days. That's a separate thing. But for that present day and time, it's not there. Right. <clears throat> then comes 405 method not allowed. So suppose you are interacting with an API that only allows specific HTTP methods for a particular endpoint. Right. If you attempt to use unsupported method, you will receive a 405 status code. Right. So it means that it will allow you for some particular endpoint also. See, every time endpoints do differ from APIs to APIs, right? So these all details you will get in the Swagger documentation of your applications, right? Or some means of documentation that will be used by the development team, right? You can also use, so there is one tip given, always use options method to cross-check when what all methods are allowed, right? So you can see here, they are trying to, uh, you know, this is a request, put is a method, name and email address they have mentioned it says 405 not allowed right put method is not allowed for this endpoint see there are certain aspects when put will be used when get will be used when post will be used so we will cover in the separate video but meanwhile for this video you can just think that for some particular uh endpoint some particular http methods might only be allowed right it's like a lock and key example you have a lock and you have its key with that key so let's say there are two locks lock one and lock two and you have two keys key one and key two with key one you will be able to unlock lock one but with key one you won't be able to unlock lock two unless and until it's a master key right so there are separate endpoints there are separate methods which you will be looking in each and every api request Right now, again, the specific endpoints, the request formats, the error messages, they might also vary depending on the API you are testing. Right. So this was a video on the mostly asked one of the interview question. One of the mostly asked API testing interview question is what kind of method, what kind of messages, what kind of codes you get right when you do API testing. Right. So uh, thank you so much for uh, watching this video. And I would just like to tell you that, see this API testing playlist is uh, being uploaded every day, you know, or I think videos are being getting uploaded. So it's, it's free of cost. So please take advantage of this particular thing. API testing is very important. Even if you are a manual tester or you're an automation tester, you should know how to do API testing. You might get questions on API testing in your interviews also, right? So this was one of the attempt to cover one of the interview question. We'll come up with more such videos. Meanwhile, uh, please keep hitting the like button and uh, please uh, share this videos with all the people in your network so that they can also know what kind of answer they have to give in the real time interviews, right? So thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for more updates.